How's it going, guys? This is Physique Development. My name is Alex. This is Austin. So we're going to start an execution series. This is going to be our first video of the series. The first thing we're talking about is the lengthened and shortened position. Yeah, so we'll start with shortened. Um, so I'm going to scoot up here because this is the good. Get up all <laughs> nice and personal. If we're doing a cable fly, for instance, and we're coming in front of us here, so that is going to be the shortest and most contracted that our chest can get as my pec is extremely <laughs> hard right there. So the chest originates here in the sternum and attaches over here, the humeral bone over here. So what we're going to try to do is just bring those points as close as possible. So I'm bringing that attachment to that origin and creating a very uh, hard contraction from there. So that's the short position. And then the lengthened is just going <laughs> to... Oh, shit! <laughs> the lengthened position is just going to be new axis tees. Yeah. Check out their hugging. That's an XL, brother. Oh. All right. <laughs> so the, the lengthened position is going to be, um, for instance, the movement we like to do is a like a bench um, or any pressing movement um, is going to overload that lengthened position. So when our chest is uh, lengthened, the load is greatest in that lengthened position. Um, so any pressing movement, so a dumbbell press or a uh, barbell press or anything like that. And then dumbbell fly is the other one that we want to talk about. Something cool that you can do with the dumbbell fly is that you're going to be emphasizing the lengthened position. With the dumbbell, you'll be able to really get back up in there. Um, so I'll be, you would be uh, right, right up in here. Yep, okay. Um, so from the side, I would be, this would be, my back would be laying flat on the bench, and I would be, instead of coming, generally you will see that people are coming, punch you in the face. <laughs> um, you would come like this. Instead, you'll come back further, starting from, this would be your out in front of you, and then you'll be coming back, 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 back. While maintaining tension on the chest, you don't want to be flinging this around because this is a very vulnerable position for your shoulder. Um, so really maintain um, overall contraction on your chest and really focus on getting in that lengthened position. So watch my movement pattern here. So a normal cable fly, or no, a normal dumbbell fly, we're going to be coming out, out to the side here, kind of perpendicular to your chest. So what we're going to try and do is fully lengthen our pec, which is like following that pec angle that kind of goes up um, towards like your armpit. So you're just going to be following that path up until you feel a good stretch, fully lengthen that chest, and then contract the chest first, and then squeeze that contraction throughout, and become fully shortened there. So, uh, so that's the three movements, the cable fly, the bench. Well, walk them through the, the cable fly. Well, did you talk about the fully contract? Uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah. we've got, those are the three easy movements to get, well, two in the lengthened position and one for the shortened position. And I like to, honestly, I do, cable flies at least twice every workout. Right. I usually start with them to get a good contraction as a primary movement and then um, or a warm up. Move, in, move into a pressing movement. And then move into a pressing movement and then I usually for the last movement or second to last movement I usually come back to the cable fly. Um, it's a good thing to include in like supersets and stuff. So. And then we were also going to cover um, frequency and volume. Yeah so uh, chances are unless you're hitting chest two to three times a week, which normal people don't you know, on a bodybuilding split. Um, but as of late, and more the evidence-based and research community becomes more apparent, which is fantastic. Uh, we love that. Um, it's pushing towards more of a frequent um, training than what used to be thought of. So uh, two to three times per week per muscle group. So let's say you're hitting like 15 sets or 16 sets normally. Uh, so that'd be like four sets of four different exercises on your chest day. Um, what that's gonna be is you're gonna try to either split that up into two days or what you're gonna be able to do is actually, instead of having eight uh, sets on one day, eight sets on the other, you're going to be able to get away with a little more. So you're going to be able to do 10 sets on the first day and 10 sets on the second day because you won't be as tired, you know. So the first day, instead of 
doing one times per week, you're hitting 16 total sets, split it up into two, you'll be able to hit 20 total sets, but you're only doing 10 sets per day. Um, and then subsequently, you can do that with three times per week, um, but the volume has to be according to what you're doing now, what you can handle, what you can recover from. So it takes some beta testing to kind of lock that in. So. Yeah. Um, so that kind of covers what we would like to tell you about weak point training with your chest. So we're going to make a whole series of this and come out with um, some training programming some sick for this programming as well. You guys can follow so to get this is like Alex's this is like chest. all kinds of benefits for you. everybody. Everyone. For everyone. This Involved. is all kinds of gains. And if you don't have this t-shirt here, moderate your diet, not your life. It's kind of hard to see with the camera. <laughs> but anyways, it's fine. Um, please like, share, and subscribe to this video. Or please like, share, and please subscribe as well. You can subscribe to the video only <laughs> yes. if you want. Bye okay, now. peace out. Bye.